Levi Tillman, right now, who is winning the great race to create the car of the future? Well, I would say it's the United States. We have some great companies here. We have General Motors, it has the Chevy Volt. We have Tesla that, of course, has an award-winning car in the Model S. Um, but, you know, it's a race that's ongoing, and we can't rest. Whatever happened to the Toyota Prius? Because they had first mover advantage. The whole world was supposed to be taken over by Priuses for a while, and they've really fallen off the map. Well, hybrids are actually still a big part of the technology picture. Moving forward, they're going to be an even bigger part of the technology picture. The Prius is actually the number one best-selling car in Japan, and it sells very well in the United States as well. Um, but the fact is, if we want to get to zero emissions and zero oil dependence, we have to move towards pure electric vehicles. And that's why we're looking at plug-in electric vehicles. And that's why everyone's looking at Tesla, because that's the hottest car in the market right now, even though they don't make many cars. So how did Elon Musk create a brand new car company when a new car company hasn't been built in, in the U.S. since the 40s? That's a great question. So it's because that's not the only reason they're looking at Tesla. Tesla is also a terrific car. It won the 2012 Motor Trends Car of the Year Award. It has blistering acceleration. You see these videos of Tesla on the drag strip with some of the hottest cars built in the world today, and the Tesla Model S wins. And so what Elon Musk succeeded in doing is creating a car that had less environmental impact than a Prius, but also better performance than a supercar. Meanwhile, he leapfrogged GM, which has been working on the Chevy Volt forever. So will the Chevy Volt ever catch on, or will it always be the car of the future at GM? Well, I think the Chevy Volt has pretty good sales. They haven't really updated it in about five years, but at the Detroit, at the Detroit Auto Show, they just came out with a new version of the Chevy Volt. It has a longer battery range. It can fit um, one more person. There's a small child seat in the middle in the back, and they're hoping that that's going to take them into the next generation of Chevy Volt sales and a bigger market. How will lower oil prices affect the development of electric cars? Because when oil goes down, a lot of renewable energy projects and electric car projects, they really get thrown on the back burner because people want big gas guzzlers again. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a consistent story. You have a price spike in energy, a lot of private money and a lot of money money from the government goes into the renewable energy and the oil alternatives field. And then when prices come back down, the money retreats, you see these industries crash. The nice thing about electric cars is you have a group called the California Air Resource Board that has actually instituted a mandate that forces automakers from around the world, if they want to sell cars in California, to sell electric vehicles. And what they've done is they've overlaid a market on top of this mandate that essentially allows automakers to buy and sell the credits that they gain from selling these electric vehicles amongst themselves. Because of that, there's kind of a shock absorber built into the system. If fewer electric cars are sold, the price of those credits goes up, and that gives automakers greater incentive to lower their prices, sell more electric vehicles. So I don't think, I don't think the electric vehicle is going anywhere. It's here with us to stay. All right, it's here with us right now. But people are talking about the next car of the future, and that's the Google self-driving car. Where are we in terms of the timeline for this particular vehicle? It's really exciting. A lot of people think that the Google self-driving car came out of nowhere. It didn't. There was a lot of military work on self-driving vehicles over the past 10, 20 years. But Google is the one that really put it into prime time. And because of Google, you have every major auto manufacturer actively developing self-driving cars. You have big tier one automotive suppliers like Bosch promising to put these things on the road by the year 2021, 22, 23 with escalating levels of automation. It's going to be a really dynamic time in the auto industry. All right, thanks a lot, Levi. Great, thank you very much. And thank you for watching The Street.